Welcome everybody to our first example in Power Series Expansions of Functions. So suppose we were given the function sine, and we were asked to actually calculate that sine value at some point. Say that we wanted the sine of 0 0.1. How might we do that? Well, one thing that we could do, I mean, we could say, all right, I could go back to my definitions of sine, and I'm drawing some kind of right triangle, and so I've got my angle theta in here, and my sine, if that's 1, and there's my y value. And the problem that we run into is the value at which we want to calculate it might not be an easy value. And so how do we actually come up with what the true value of sine of 0 0.1 is actually going to be? And for that, people kind of ask this question as, can we approximate something like sine with a polynomial. Polynomials are kind of nice, easy functions. And can we take that polynomial? We can just plug values in. Evaluating them is awfully easy. And so if we could find some polynomial that approximates sine, then we could just plug values into that polynomial and actually get it. Now, we know that sine is not going to be a polynomial function. And so our approximation may only be good within a certain limit, but we could still go ahead and maybe approximate it close to a value that we're interested in. And for that is really the idea behind using a power series expansion of a function to actually get the true value of that function, um, or at least if we cut off a certain number of terms, to get an approximation for that function. And for that, enter Taylor and Maclaurin series expansions. So what a Taylor series expansion of a function is, is suppose we have the function that we're interested in has derivatives of all orders at a particular point, x is equal to a. Then we could say that the Taylor series for that function f at a is really defined by this formula here. And so it's defined by this infinite series, and so if we write out the terms, it has this form to it. Now, a Maclaurin series is really just a special case of a Taylor series where we evaluate our function at zero. And so let's take a slightly deeper look and see where this formula might actually come from. Well, just for simplicity's sake, let's say that we took a polynomial p of x, and that thing had a representation, so p a sub 0, a sub 1 times x, plus a sub 2 times x squared, a sub 3 times x cubed, a sub 4 times x to the fourth, and then let's just make it a fifth degree, a, a sub 5 times x to the fifth. If we wanted to recover these coefficients in our polynomial and we wanted to use calculus to do it, we can kind of use the notion of um, take derivatives and then evaluate. So for instance, if we just took and evaluated our polynomial at zero, then what we end up with, every term that had an x in it is going to go to zero, and so we're just left with a sub zero. If we then look at the first derivative of our polynomial. Well, our a sub 0 goes away, so we have a sub 1 plus 2 a sub 2 times x plus 3 a sub 3 times x squared plus 4 a sub 4 times x cubed plus 5 a sub 5 times x to the fourth. Well, if I kind of do the same thing and then evaluate my derivative at 0, I end up with a 1. Well, if I kind of keep this going and I look at the, deriv the second derivative, so that one's going to give me 2a sub 2 plus 3 times 2 times a sub 3 times x 
plus 4 times 3 times a sub 4 times x squared, plus 5 times 4 times a sub 5 x cubed. Well, kind of doing that same trick. If I continue and I evaluate my second derivative at 0, then what happens, all of my higher order terms go away, and I just have 2 a sub 2. Well, if I kind of keep this going for a couple more steps, then for my third derivative, I'm going to have 3 times 2 times a sub 3 plus 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 4 times x plus 5 times 4 times 3 a sub 5 x squared. Well, evaluating again, my third derivative at 0 gives me 3 times 2 times a cubed. And so now if I can keep this going, I look at my fourth derivative. I have 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 4 plus 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 a sub 5 x. So evaluating my fourth derivative at 0 then gives 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 4. And if I go one more step and look at the fifth derivative, there I have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 5. And so kind of the idea that I'm looking at is if I kind of boil all of this down and kind of put it in one place, I have p sub 0 equal to a sub 0. I have p prime of 0 equal to a sub 1. So for our third derivative evaluated at 0, we have 3 times 2 times 1 times a sub 3. And then for our fourth derivative, we have... Um, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times a sub 4. And then finally, for our fifth derivative, we have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times a sub 5. And so it's really not that big a stretch for us to think if we take the nth derivative and evaluate it at 0, that we have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to... 2 times 1 times a sub n. Or put a little more succinctly, we have n factorial times a sub n. So if I kind of rearrange this, then as far as my coefficient, what does it become? The nth derivative evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial. Now if we kind of take this and put it in the context of Taylor's theorem, we see something that's not terribly surprising and the formula makes a little more sense. So for Taylor's theorem, assuming that we have derivatives of all orders, then what does the form look like? Well, we're really just taking the nth derivative. So we're taking the nth derivative of our function, evaluating it at the point at which we're interested, what's going to be the center of our series, and then divide by n factorial. The n factorial really coming from taking repeated derivatives. And so once we do that, our Taylor series expansion for a function seems to make a little more sense now. Let's actually apply this and see how it works in, uh, on a concrete problem. So in this case, we're asked to find a Taylor polynomial p sub 5 for the function f of x equal to 3 natural log of x at x equal 1. When we say a Taylor polynomial p sub i, all that really means is that we take a Taylor expansion centered at 1 and <clears throat> stop at the term x minus 1 to the fifth power.
So we really just take it out to the point where the five is really saying the degree of the polynomial for which we're evaluating this. And so what we need is all the way out to the fifth derivatives of this particular function. For our original function, we have f of x is equal to 3 times the natural log of x. For our first derivative, we have 3 over x. For our second derivative, we have a minus 3 over x squared. For our third derivative, we have a 6 over x cubed. For our fourth derivative, we have a minus 18 over x to the fourth. And finally, for our fifth derivative, we have a 72 over x to the fifth power. So then we take each one of these derivatives and we evaluate them at our center point that we're interested in in particular for this series, namely x is equal to 1. So if we plug 1 into this thing, so we have 3 times the natural log of 1. Well, natural log of 1 is 0, so we get 0. If we plug in 1 into our first derivative, we have 3. If we plug 1 into our second derivative, now we have a minus 3. If we plug a 1 into our third derivative, we have 6. Plugging 1 into our fourth derivative gives us a negative 18. And then finally, plugging 1 into our fifth derivative gives us a positive 72. So once we've got all of our derivatives evaluated at our point, now we're ready to plug them into our series. So then if we want to approximate our function 3 times the natural log of x with a fifth degree polynomial, we've got 3 times x minus 1 to the first power minus 3 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 squared, then plus 6 over 3 factorial x minus 1 cubed minus an 18 over 4 factorial, x minus 1 to the 4th, and then finally, plus a 72 over a 5 factorial, x minus 1 to the 5th power. So if we go through and we simplify this polynomial just a little bit, what we end up with is 3 times an x minus 1 minus 3 halves x minus 1 squared plus an x minus 1 to the third minus 3 fourths x minus 1 to the fourth plus a 3 fifths times x minus 1 to the fifth power. Well, one question as to how good an approximation this really is can be answered kind of by looking at the graphs of the two functions together. So here what we have is our blue graph actually representing our 3 times the natural log of x. So it's curving around doing something like this. What we have with our fifth degree polynomial is the green function here. What we notice is that around our center point, our function does match exactly. Now, the further that we get from that center point, our approximation is not so good, but we can actually get... Oh, maybe out to here, it looks like. We've got a fairly good approximation out to maybe 1.2 over on the right. And then over on the left, we can get quite a bit further over to the left. And for maybe, oh, somewhere around 0 0.8, we can get a pretty good approximation for what the nat 3 times the natural log of x is going to be. And this is pretty typical of what we see with Taylor series expansions. They are match exactly at the center point of our polynomial, the, uh, the center point of our um, expansion. And then as we move from there, our expansion doesn't get quite as good. It doesn't converge quite as much. But as long as we stay really close to the value that we're interested in, in particular here at 1, then if we're not too far away from 1, we do get a very good approximation for what the natural log is going to be. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next example.